So I'm glad because I was touting over here. So I am going to share my screen with you guys and we're going to talk about BNI fundamentals today. I thought you guys might like that. Go all the way back to the front. And we're going to have a little fun with it too. Where am I? All right. Here it comes. You guys are going to be blown away and so excited to see my slides. And here it comes. I would only ask when it pops up, it pops up if somebody would give me a thumbs up that you see my screen properly. Okay, perfect. So today I'm going to focus on the 12 BNI fundamentals, but I'm going to put a virtual spin on it. We're all still in these virtual, um, virtual spaces. We're all still meeting virtually for our regular meetings, as well as a lot of our one-to-one -one meetings. So I want to put a little spin on those 12 fundamentals from a virtual aspect. And since I just started recording, I'm going to reintroduce myself. Again, my name is Trisha Stetzel. I'm the owner of Results Extreme Business Solutions, and I am the education coordinator for Referral Masters. So let's get on with the show. So these are the 12 points that I'm going to touch on. Making the most of your time, full participation, the difference between tier one and two referrals, effective one-to-ones, how to bring a good substitute into your chapter, an effective 10-minute presentation, learning about BNI. So let's start with the 10 top 10 ways to make the most of your time in BNI. So I will tell you a little secret in the BNI um, worksheets that this comes from, it actually says the top 10 ways to waste time in BNI. I happen to live in the, my glasses have full space, so I re-engineered it <laughs> to be positive. So you guys bear with me. Be early. Do you know what it means to be early? It doesn't mean be one minute before eight because technology is a bear. If you try to log in one minute, one minute before eight or 10 or 1030 or whenever your meeting starts, if you try to log in one minute early before your meeting time starts, you're going to have a problem, right? That's always the way it works. So you really need to think about giving yourself at least five minutes. Now I like to log in 15 minutes early. So our meeting starts at eight o'clock. I like to log in at 7.45. It doesn't mean that I'm fully participating at 7.45. It usually takes me about five minutes to get situated, but I log in early. Show up, bring a visitor. That's how you build trust with, that's how you build trust with your referral partners. Teach us how to refer you. And we're gonna talk about that later in your, six, in your uh, 60 second presentation. If you're not telling us, how to refer you, what is that call to action after you tell us who you wanna meet, then you're missing something completely from your BNI experience. Make sure that you're scheduling one-to-ones. You guys, I just did an education moment last week with my chapter about standing people up. How many of you have ever been stood up? Did it feel good? Don't treat your best client like that. Your BNI chapter is your best client. They're the ones out there talking about you. They're the ones out there marketing for you. It's your marketing team. Treat them with respect and treat them as though they were your best client. Focus on your who or what or both. Focus on your, excuse me, your who and your what for your 10 minute presentation. Don't get up there and tell us how to change a pipe if you're a plumber. Don't get up there and tell us how you put a shingle on a roof or do an inspection. You wanna spend very little time there and more time on who you wanna meet and how to introduce you. And obviously you wanna be a, an active participant. So how do you fully participate in the meeting? Show up, you should show up. We count absences, 
we count tardies. Show up. Here's the thing about showing up. When you show up, you're building trust with your business partners, with your business referral partners. You guys remember the VCP curve, right? Visibility, visibility, credibility, profitability. If you're not showing up, where are you on the VCP curve? You're not, you're invisible. Show up, build that trust with your partners. Network, oh my goodness, it's Zoom. How in the world are you gonna network? So at the beginning of this meeting, I popped in a minute late, Oh, but I did because I was Zoom hopping. I popped in and nobody was talking and nobody was in the chat. So I started some of that conversation. I put Bonnie, Bonnie in charge and said, I got, I got to come back in a minute. And you guys were silent the whole time. I could hear you. Crickets. Network with each other. Do you realize the opportunity that you have even on this meeting to meet people who are all the way out in Beaumont? Oh, by the way, did you know that? Did you know that there are people on this Zoom call from another region? Mind-blowing, right? Network. I know it's hard. You're talking over people. It's a little hard to figure all of that stuff out. Use the chat window. Connect with the visitors. Welcome them in the chat. Welcome so-and-so to our meeting. So glad that you're here. I would love to connect with you. What do you do? And you should be asking your visitors that during the 15 minutes at the beginning of your meeting. It doesn't change. It's weird and awkward. Talk into the camera, ask the new people who are coming in or the visitors that are coming in, they generally will have their name under their face. Hey, Bob, nice to see you. We're so glad that you're here at the meeting. Who invited you? Well, tell us a little bit about your business. That's how you network, just do it. And if you're shy, that's okay because it's Zoom, no one can find you, I'm kidding. All right, and the last thing is participate. Please don't be doing something else while you're at the meeting. Talk about lowering your level on the VCP curve. That's a way to do it. So let's say that you and I are at credibility, almost at profitability. And I'm watching the group because I can see everyone's faces and I see you doing this and not during the time when people are doing their 60 seconds. But you're doing this the entire time or you might be talking to somebody over here. Yeah, I'm telling them what to do or you might be on your phone. Do you know how quickly you drop on that curve? Just because you're on your way up doesn't mean that you can't go back down because you certainly can. So participate in the meeting, it's super important. All right. Chickens and the eggs. Which one do you want? So I have a poll for you guys and we talk about referrals. How many referrals should you pass in a four week month? It's on your screen. One, zero, goose egg. Yeah, it's a really good question, right? And I say, should you pass? Now in our region, in Mark's region, we're held to a really high standard. And I understand that Southeast Texas is also held to a very high standard. So I hope that all of you who answered the poll, I'm gonna close it, said four. I'm so glad that none of you said any other answer because then we'd be in trouble. All right, moving on. Let's talk about the difference between tier one and two and tier three referrals. So your eggs, these are your clients, right? This is a direct transaction with you. A tier one referral is a member in your chapter or a member of another chapter buys your product or service. Yay, that's how we build trust, especially if we're new or we don't know the person yet, right? That person is trying out your product or service to see if they can recommend it or refer you to someone else. A tier two referral is someone outside of the BNI circle. It might be my mom, might be my sister, might be a friend, might be my neighbor. That's a tier two referral. It's still typically a single transaction. 
Now it could be recurring, but it's still generally a single transaction. Tier three, the chicken. That's what we're looking for, right? We're looking for referrals to people that we can build relationships with. My responsibility to build the relationship once you've referred me so that that chicken continues to lay those 12 eggs all the time. That is what, that's where the money's at when we talk about BNI, right? Are you making money in BNI? If you're only asking for eggs, maybe you're not making as much as you could or want to. If you're asking for the chickens, you can have as much as you want. You're responsible for building those relationships, however. Keep that in mind. All right. Giving great referrals. Mark always says in our region, a lead is a four letter word. There are some instances that a lead is okay, right? Uh, especially if you're getting to know someone, you acknowledge that it's probably a lead, you're kind of trying out, do I know you well enough? Can I refer you, right? It, it's okay, but that's not the goal. The goal is giving great referrals. So how do you do that? Well, number one, it's not just putting it in the tool and it shows up on my phone or my computer and it says, hey, Trisha, I just referred you Bob Smith. Here's his phone number. That's not a good referral, you guys. What's a good referral? One, you need to teach us what a good referral is. So that's your responsibility, right? And if I pass you a not so good referral, you should give me feedback. Nice feedback. First, you should say, thank you. Thank you for trying, Trisha, to pass me a referral. However, the person didn't pick up the phone, they didn't, they didn't know who I was, whatever it is, right? Make sure that you're giving that feedback. But a great referral for me is when you warm it up. That's what a referral is, right? You already have a relationship with that person. It might be a new relationship, that's okay. It might be a relationship that you've had with someone for 10 years. What you're giving away to me when you pass me a referral is your credibility, not a phone number. You are passing your credibility that you have with that person to me. That's the gift. That's a good referral. And by the way, not only do you need to teach us what a good referral is and give us feedback, but you also need to tell us how you want to receive those referrals. Some people like an in-person meeting, which would be Zoom today. Some people are okay with an email. Some people are okay with a text message. So keep those things in mind when you're passing or receiving referrals. You need to make sure that you have open communication with your referral partner on what a good referral is. Now, we live in this digital world. Passing a referral through the tool is not the way to do it. Oh, by the way, did you know inside BNI Connect on your phone, you can actually push the little, uh, it's like a little three point, uh, it looks like a carrot with three points on it, and you can share that virtual contact with someone. You can share my information with the person that you're trying to refer me to very easily from that tool. If you have questions about it, we can talk about it later. All right, referring outside of your contact sphere, what does that mean? It means that people that you may not feel like you have a connection, right? So in uh, the real estate business, if I'm a realtor, my contact sphere is generally somebody who's in the mortgage business, insurance business, roofing business, um, inspection business, right? That's easy. I can refer them all day long, but what if I want to give a referral outside of that contact sphere? First, you better go have a one-to-one. -one. Get to know the person, understand their needs or their wants or their desires, who they want to meet, and figure out who you know that you can introduce them to. And again, get to know those people, all right? So the be creative part here is if they're hard to refer, 
Ask them if they want to write a blog on your website. Ask them if they want to write an article in a magazine that you produce. Ask them if they want to do a live Facebook interview that gives you some credibility so that you can get people to sign up for a class. Be creative. Think outside the box when we're talking about referrals. And I'm not, I'm not, believe me, not telling you that you should say to someone, hey, go like my Facebook page and I'll let you put in a referral for that. No, that's too easy. It's about building relationships. So if someone does something for you on purpose and you're able to meet people through that, that's a creative way of trying to build your referral sources, okay? Think about that. Oh, good grief. Somebody passes you a referral and you let it sit in your inbox, on your desk, on a note for three or four days. Don't do that. Follow up immediately. The person who's expecting your phone call, the person who's looking for you to follow up with them, the person that your referral partner warmed up for you is not going to be ready for you three or four days from now. That may be why you got the, I don't know who you are. Follow up immediately. It's the respectful thing to do. Under ones. I have another poll for you guys. Here it comes. Let's see. Uh, polling. And here it comes. How many one to ones should you have in a five week month? Does it matter? Can't see all your beautiful faces. Am I putting y'all to sleep? I hope not. Okay, wow. 12 out of 13 people answered this time. I'm impressed. All right. I'm sharing the results. And ding, 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 ding. You all win. All right. 100% of you say five. So if you're brand new to BNI and you've never seen that before, here's how it works. You should have one one-to-one -to -one each week during the month. If it's a five-week month, if it's a five-meeting month, you should have five. If it's a four-meeting month, then you should have four. If you guys take a holiday, doesn't matter, you still need four, right? Let's say the 4th of July falls during the week of your meeting, on the day of your meeting, and you don't meet. You don't get a pass to not have that one-to-one. -one. So you gotta squeeze that into another week. You guys, one-to-ones are so important. So I, I, I said something earlier about being stood up. So here's the thing behind that. Number one, you're gonna fall off the VCP curve very quickly if you don't show up. Number two, it's disrespectful to not show up. And number three, if you've decided that you've been in your chapter too long to go and meet the new people in the chapter because you just don't do that anymore, You've disrespected everyone in the chapter for not participating in welcoming that new member into the chapter. So think about that. You guys are all here, so we don't have that problem in this room. I know you guys all want to go do one-to-ones with everyone in your chapter, so kudos to you. But if you know people in your chapter that are like that, go talk to them and tell them. It's disrespectful. You should meet with the new people. You should meet with the old people. I don't mean old. You guys know what I mean, right? So make sure that you have effective one-to-ones. Number one, you should be passing your gains. If you don't know what that is, ask in the chat, someone will answer you. You should be passing your gains profile 24 hours ahead of the meeting, even in this virtual world. I know some of you are starting to meet back in person. Some of you are meeting online. Pass your gains. That gives you a place to start. It doesn't mean you should talk about your dogs for the entire hour. So here is what, here's what makes up a really good one-to-one. -one. Pass your gains first, have a plan. Spend an equal amount of time on each person, meaning book an hour, spend 30 minutes on the first person and 30 minutes on the second person. If you have to set a timer, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. You politely tell the person we're 30 minutes in, let's swap, tell me about you. How can I refer you? Educate me. 
What is the call to action? What are the things that I should be listening for? And oh, by the way, every one-to-one -one that you leave, you should have written down a name of a person that you're gonna go ask to meet the person that you had the one-to-one -one with. It's all about action, right? It's not just the activity of having a one-to-one. -one. It is the action that you take after the one-to-one -one that counts. Get to know the person that you're sitting across from. Be respectful of their time. Don't show up late. Show up on time, just like you would for the meeting. Again, remember, I said, treat members of your chapter like your best client. Would you show up late to a client meeting? Probably not. I hope not. I wouldn't refer you if you did that all the time. Wow, think about that, right? So if you show up late to my one-to-one, -one, do I think that you're going to show up late to the client that I might introduce you to? I might, right? Those are, we're humans. Those are the things that we think about. Show up on time, respect my time. And when we leave, we should both have an action. Who do I know that you want to meet? Successful substitutes. You guys, if you have to be absent, life happens. Send a substitute. I've seen it happen a few different ways. Number one, a great substitute, one of your clients. One of your clients, why not? Why wouldn't they want the opportunity to go and meet all of these wonderful people that you network with every week? Ask a client, ask somebody in your business, right? If you have an office, you have an office staff, ask them to be a substitute. Don't have the same substitute every time you miss. Mix it up. We want to meet new people. You gain credibility when you invite visitors to meet us. You gain credibility. That's what you gain when you invite people to meet us, even if it's a substitute, right? So a client, somebody in your office, here's one that I saw. Somebody from our chapter invited a client to, um, to our chapter meeting. And although he represented the member very well, he gave a testimonial about the member while he was substituting, which was amazing, blew my mind. He came in and he said, I'm substituting for so-and-so, representing this business, my name is, this is my business. I wanna tell you my experience with the member. It was amazing. So it's another way that you can have somebody come in and substitute for you, sharing a testimonial, and that's great coming from a client. Visitors, all right, you guys, we're doing Zoom. It's not hard, bring people. You don't have to load them in a bus kicking and screaming to go to your meeting. Just politely ask people. And for, I, I had a conversation with somebody new uh, to, to our chapter the other day and, and they told me, I just say too much. Exactly, I think we all do that, right? We're so excited about this opportunity to share with other people that we tell them too much. Just tell them, hey, you know what? I've got some people in my uh, networking circle. We have a meeting uh, that happens every X at whatever time it is. And I really want to introduce you to them because I think they may be able to pass you business. Always go at it with what's in it for them. What's in it for the person that you're inviting? An introduction to somebody that they can get business from. That's easy, right? Keep it simple. K-I-S-S, -S, right? You guys have seen that before and you're gonna have to follow up with your visitors. You invite them, they say yes, they don't show up, right? That's what happens. You invite them, you follow up with them, you follow up with them again and again, they'll show up. Oh, by the way, uh, Southeast Texas region just had visitors days and they had tons of follow-ups, right? And I'm sure there were a lot of people who said they were coming and they didn't show up, but there were a lot of people who did come because they followed up with everyone. So make sure that you're following up. All right, I have another poll. I think this is it. These are getting easy, right? So you guys um, kind of get the gist here. The last question is really hard. So I have one more poll question. I like it, we're mixing it up this time. How many visitors should you have in a four week month? All right, some people quit participating. Where are you? I see you. 
I know you're not putting your poll answers in, but come on. You know, I did this to keep you engaged, right? Because I don't like talking at people. It's not my thing. I like collaboration way better. All right, I want to know who the two people are that said five. I love you. That's awesome. Okay, so the answer is in a four-week month, in order to stay in the green or get to 100% when you include your visitor count is one. Um, but I love the idea of bringing five. You guys rock, whoever you are. I like it. Bringing visitors is important because, again, it shows us as your referral partners that you trust us. You trust us to bring people into this inner circle that we have, right? It's important. So, again, back to VCP. Trust comes around the visibility and credibility area, right, before we ever become profitable. You guys have to build relationships. So here's another little tip when you're building relationships online, when we talk about this virtual world that we live in, it takes seven virtual meetings to equal one handshake. Seven virtual meetings to equal one handshake. Take that into consideration as you're building relationships with your referral partners. Okay, especially new people in your chapter. People that you already knew, you already have a relationship, you already shook hands more than once, right? So you continue to build those relationships via a virtual method. For those people who are new, keep in mind it takes seven virtual meetings to equal one, shake, one handshake. We're human, right? Okay, 60 seconds. Don't spend a whole lot of your minute telling us what you do. We know what you do. We wanna know who you wanna meet and how you wanna meet them. So say your name, the name of your business. You might tell us which service or product you're concentrating on, but don't tell us about it, right? Tell us what it is. Give us a name or an industry of a person that you want to meet and tell us how to introduce you. That's the call to action. The call to action is the most important, right? Pass my business card, send them a virtual business card, send them an email, introduce me via text message, whatever it is, always include your call to action. So in your 60 seconds, name, business, the product or service that you're representing, who you want to meet, the call to action, and then say the name of your business and your name again. That'll fill 60 seconds. And Please plan. I hear people tell me, when it's my turn to talk, I get really nervous because I don't know what to say. Well, then plan it. Write it down. Have a script. It's a Zoom meeting. Put it in a Word document on your computer below your camera. Plan for your 60 seconds. That is a humongous piece of your meeting every single week. Tell us who you want to meet. If you're not doing that, you're not doing BNI right. You need to tell us who you wanna meet and how to introduce you. Super important, right? So some people consider it their elevator speech. That's the picture, guys. I know you guys like my pictures. 10 minute presentation. Here's what, I, there are a lot of ways to do it. Here's my recommendation. Spend two minutes on you, who you are. You've already been introduced, by the way. Someone should have introduced you. Probably the secretary treasurer or whoever is, is taking care of the speaker rotation. Someone should have already introduced you, so you don't have to spend a whole lot of time on you. If you told us your why in two minutes, that would be mind-blowing. So spend two minutes on you, two minutes on your what, what do you do, because there might be some visitors in the room that don't understand. Spend six minutes on who you want to meet and how to introduce you. You guys, this is the, this is the easiest way to get the most out of your BNI experience. Concentrate on who you want to meet and how to introduce you, what to listen for, what's the call to action. Always be thinking about your call to action. We need to know what that is as your referral partners. So a 10 minute presentation, you should spend less time talking about yourself and more time talking about who you want to meet 
and how we introduce you. Make sense? Learning about BNI. Who knows what a CEU is? I have one more poll question for you guys. I know, are you guys all sleeping over there? This is one thing about Zoom. There's no like interaction. It's really uncomfortable. All right, let's see if I can find the last poll. Here it comes. What does CEU stand for? Cats, no one wants the cats. Cats, come on. You know that had to come from an animal lover, right? That was somebody, <laughs> thank you, whoever you are. Oh my goodness, everyone answered that. You guys are all awesome and amazing. Everyone participated. Yes, a CEU is a chapter education unit. Please use BNI Connect. There are business booster series out there. There are books written by and co-authored by Dr. Ivan Meisner that are very beneficial to um, your networking experience. There are, um, there's BNI University, which you should all be familiar with because you had to go into BNI University to do your MSP. Does anybody know what that stands for? Member of Success Program, right? So take full advantage of your BNI experience. If you start to say it feels like another job, you're doing it wrong. If you've been around long enough, you've probably had those thoughts. Stop doing what you're doing and go back to the fundamentals. The fundamentals are so important to your success in BNI. So again, just to go back through the list. Top 10 ways, and I recorded this by the way, you can go back and look at it if you want, I'll post it. Um, 10 ways that you can make the most of your time. Full participation, tier one and two and three referrals, giving great referrals, referring outside of your contact sphere, following up on referrals, effective one-to-ones, successful substitutes, inviting visitors and follow-up, effective 60 seconds, effective 10 minute presentation, and continued learning in BNI. Those are all of the ways that you can continue to be successful in BNI. All right, so a few of you hung in there with me. I ran some people off. If you guys wanna come off and mute and offer some feedback, some of your experiences, what you guys thought about the information. May I say something, Ms. Trish? Yes, go for it. Um, I think what I've learned too is that one one to one is not enough. Like the more I meet with you, the more I have one to ones. It's like not only am I building more relationship, I'm understanding more about you. I know how to give a good referral, and if I forget something, I can say, you know what? I know we talked about it last time, but can you remind me? Yeah, I love that. Carla, thank you so much for offering that. Yes, we absolutely need to meet with people more than once. It's a, that's what we do when we're building relationships, right? And back to what I said about being in this virtual world, you have to have seven virtual meetings to equal one handshake, right? Which means you got to do a lot of one-to-ones. You just do. Thank you, Carla. Anybody else? Uh I, I do, Trish. I just wanted to share my thoughts about <clears throat> the language you gave us about inviting visitors, and our, especially in our extended network. Uh, I, I really like what you said there, so I wrote it down verbatim, so I'm going to steal that from you. You got that. You know what? That's why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you, Jace. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Great information. I love the slides. The slides, all the little characters. <laughs> that was great. Well, I started with some really wordy slides, and that's probably where we lost some people. They're like, oh, I'm out. I don't want to listen to this mess. Yeah, I'm not. I don't like wordy slides. I come from What's corporate. What's wrong with wordy? So. 
<laughs> well, all right, Kathy, engineer. <laughs> Some people like that. I'm more about pictures, so. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Was it beneficial to you very guys? Special. Thank you, it was very okay. beneficial. So um, here's what I'm going to tell you about the um, 12 fundamentals. It is actually a 12 weeks of fundamentals that your education coordinators have access to. So I just gave you guys in 40 minutes, 12 weeks worth of material. You're welcome. <laughs> it's good stuff. So if you feel a little overwhelmed, that's why. But I think it's really good to revisit that stuff, right? I mean, it's just the fundamentals. It's the things that we should be doing all of the time. Extremely efficient. I am. I'm very efficient. Listen, I was in the military, so I know about <laughs> being efficient. Or maybe the opposite of being efficient, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Tori, is that a UH mask? I see it, Tori. Ah. Oh. I love it. Yeah, we, U of H is our client. So we ended up with a whole bunch of extra. Oh, stuff. I need one. Oh my God, that's the cutest. Although, you know, I think we should get B and I mask too. It does kind of look like it. If we did the step and repeat with the B and I logo. It does. That would be that cool. Super cute. I'm all about logos. I love putting logos on everything. Everything. Hit me I'm up. all about you know, swag. Mask. All right, so here's what you guys need to know because it's Wednesday, you need to know Wednesday. We only have two more of these. Oh, wow. We only have two more of these before it is going to shift to something else. I don't know what the something else looks like, but I will only be hanging around to facilitate two more. Um, so next Wednesday, we've got Strategic Alliance represented. And then the following Wednesday, it will be back to Southeast Texas. You guys are gonna uh, wrap us up. So I'm super excited to see that presentation, but that's it. We've only got two more what you need to know Wednesdays in this format. I don't, somebody else may take over or Mark may do something. So um, thank you guys for listening to me today. I always learn something every time. <laughs> All right, what else do you guys wanna talk about? Is there, does anybody need help with anything? How is BNI working for you? Do you have a question for the group? I mean. Look at all of the brain power that we have right now with 12 minutes left on this call that we could use. I do have a hard time chattering before. I'm, I'm usually the quiet one. Yeah, and I think, Bonnie, there's really an art to that. Um, I, I hold back at the beginning because I feel like people, some people, not all of them, but I feel like some people in my chapter would depend on me to be the outgoing extrovert, introducing everyone, talking to everyone. And I hold back on purpose because I think it's important that there's um, space for everyone to participate. So if you feel like there's somebody, maybe there's somebody in your group that overpowers that portion of the meeting. If, if there is, you may just, you know, ask them how you can partner with them, right? Uh, to have those conversations with the new people coming in. You know, just say, hey, I'm practicing being an extrovert or I'm practicing being outgoing at these meetings. Will you help me? What I would like to do, because I know that you're really good at talking to people during the first 15, minute, 15 minutes of the meeting, can I partner with you? to have those conversations because I'm practicing, right? Great idea. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's great. a very nice way to put it. <laughs> it is. Sometimes we have to tell people to shut up in a nice way. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, some of us don't have self-control sometimes. We can't help ourselves. Because in the in-person meeting, I'm buzzing around talking to everybody, right? When we're in this space, you can't necessarily do that. Um, so trying to partner with somebody who's already doing that so that you can participate is a really great way to get in there. I love that. Thank you. That's yes, absolutely. The I DM feature, not. personally. I love okay. sending private messages like during 
you know, because I, I think that's been oddly a good relationship builder for me. Somebody sending me a, like a DM and they're like, like, you know, like, Hey, I can see something. And I'm like, Oh, Oh, like, it's funny. Cause you make a small connection and like, I can see people like giggling at each other and I know that they're DMing. So I say take advantage of that. Um, oddly, not to the point where you get distracted from the meeting because, or you do something crazy or, you know, you start cracking up too bad. I know I've had a few episodes, but, um, I've, you know, I've had people call me out, like, like you're yawning and I'm like, no, I'm not. Yeah. Like just little things like that, if, you know, cause you can, I, I love the gallery view and I love spying on people and I'll be like, oh, I see your dog. You know, and it's just little things like that, that you, you have to take advantage of this format. That's just, we are so limited right now in the fact that we can't meet face to face and we have to do everything we can to connect with people in this format. Like we, it's, it's tough. It's changing the way everyone is doing business. So any way that you can take advantage of the fact that we're now all little blips on a screen, I mean, if you're not used to it, it's hard. It's hard to get That's used great to Great advice, you know. Kathy, using that chat window. If you guys aren't using the chat window in your meetings, blow it up. Our chapter blows up the chat window. Mm -hmm. uh, and what you can start with, somebody just needs to say, welcome, you know, welcome to the meeting, everyone. And then we ask all of our visitors to start putting their contact information into the chat window. And then it just blows up from there. So it's something as simple as asking someone to put their information in the chat window that can start a conversation. So yeah, Kathy, thank you for sharing that. By the way, for those of you who don't know Kathy, she actually started coming to our chapter during this Zoom phase that we're in and became a member just last week or the week before, right, Kathy? Yes. So amazing yes we're so excited to have her on board and she's an amazing business so if you don't know kathy you should meet her <laughs> she's right here in my box uh on my screen so yeah use the chat if you're not and private chatting is absolutely a great way to get to know people it's a great way to build those relationships right hey i'm watching you me center Hi, chat. i see your cat what are you doing over there okay go ahead jace i have a question about the ceus okay so to to record them on BNI Connect, mm -hmm. uh, I've had difficulty getting them to show up, like on the reports. Is there a trick to that? Not that I am aware of. It may be timing. So if you're waiting until the night before uh, Palms closes, they may not show up. It may just depend on when Palms is closing. But I don't. No, unless there's some kind of technology glitch that's happening. Well, Sorry. it seems to be like we're, when you report it, it goes into like this queue to where it has to be approved. Is that correct? Uh, do we have any VPs on the call today or past VPs? No, I do not have an answer to that. I am not familiar with this um, BNI Connect form and the way that the uh, the counts happen, right, as you enter things. Uh, I don't know if the BP has to release those numbers, if there's a button that has to happen. I know back at my first round of BNI, there was a, a button you had to push for all of the numbers to release. So I'm not sure. So you should may, I just reach out to the VP? I would absolutely talk to the VP of your chapter and just ask them, okay. what does that look like? How does that work? So if I put this information in, when does it actually get released into the Palms report? Great. Thank you. Absolutely. Anyone Great else? Question. Yes, go for it. So I just noticed someone just documented a one-to-one -one with me. And in the one-to-one, -one, when you document a one-to-one, -one, you can put notes on what you talked about. Is that seen by everybody? No, that yeah, just it's me. not on a report that individual members have. It may, may be on a report that goes, that leadership can see. Um, but I don't know for sure. You know, Kathy, you might ask Ronnie if that stuff can be seen on the reports that he pulls. Did they say something funny? No, no, I just, I, when 
I take notice of things that people could be pencil whipping. You know the term pencil whip? Sure. Yep. I always take notice of that. I don't like to pencil whip. I don't like that. I think take it full advantage of everything. But I've noticed a few one-to-ones I've had. People put the exact same thing in the notes. I'm like, <laughs> mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm dead. At, like I'm putting, like if we talked about Monopoly, I'm like, we talked about Monopoly. So I don't know. That's just me. Oh, I'm just curious if anybody here. else I'm sees that. <laughs> I got you, girl. All right, so you guys schedule one-to-ones, schedule one-to-ones outside of your chapter, schedule one-to-ones outside of your region. If you're a brand new member, please make sure you get through your passport first so that Mark doesn't come and grab me by the ear because I said schedule one-to-ones outside of your chapter. Take care of your chapter first, get to know everyone. And once you've done that, expand your wings, take full advantage of your BNI membership like being on these calls and having one-to-ones outside of your chapter and outside of your region. Mark and Natasha are great friends and we have people um, in these small spaces that we can schedule meetings with. You guys take full advantage of that. I think you're all awesome and amazing. Thank you for showing up. I hope the information that I passed along to you was beneficial and let everyone in your chapters know that we've only got two more what you need to know wednesdays next week and the following week and the format will change don't forget to put your ceu in for being here y'all have a great day hey joe draper i'm going to reach out to you y'all have a great afternoon thanks